Hey guys, welcome back to part four of the mix down session. Um, so if you haven't seen part one, two and three, then do that now. Uh, this is hopefully the last stage of the mix down. So we've previously sort of covered uh, things like EQing, whether to use subtractive or additive. We've touched on a bit of reverb. We've used some compression. We've used alternatives to compression like uh, the transient designer. Um, we've covered some of the basic sort of just level checking and how to make things appear louder. Um, and I feel like we've sat, we've got the track to a decent stage now. Um, just to recap, it's a track by Enzo Bennett, who's another mousetrap artist, and it's a solid track. I mean, it was great in the first place, so it didn't need huge amounts of work on it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I think this is kind of the final stage now. We're reaching the point where I just want to check the overall sort of balance, both in stereo balance and in amplitude across the instruments and amplitude across the frequency range. Make sure we've not got any weird spikes in places, um, which I don't think we're going to come across, but I'll, I'll sort of go through my, my thought process. Hopefully this kind of applies to most tracks, especially if you're mixing your own stuff. Um, so let's get started. Um, so this is where we sort of left off. Um, we got the kicks and bass and everything all sounding pretty tight. It's all sounding good. Uh, we've got all the synths. We've got a couple of synth plucks here that come in that we wanted to sort of sharpen up a bit or, or give the impression of being louder than they actually are. In fact, I think that's a good place to start here. So I, I'm sort of listening to the loudness of things and the balance. They, they kind of, you know, they feed each other. Um, I feel like at that point you've got uh, a few extra hats and claps and bits and pieces coming in percussion wise, and that's all well and good. But I kind of feel like I want the hats to be a bit brighter. And, and I, I guess this is kind of hard to explain in that it is just one of those things that comes naturally after time but you're, you're sort of listening to the balance of the low end and the high end um, and everything in between but you need to sort of pay particular attention to um, whether things feel comfortable or not and that's kind of a tricky thing to to get across because it's it's not really something you can teach yourself quickly you can teach yourself, but just not quickly. And and in fact, that, that comes down to my first tip is, first of all, know your equipment and your room. Your room is an extension of your monitor speakers. There's no denying that. Um, you could have the world's best monitors or the world's best room, but if the other one doesn't match, then the expensive one is wasted, basically. Um, so that's something to sort of pay attention to. But I'm going to run on the assumption, as I've assumed a lot throughout all these videos, I'm running on the assumption that most people watching this video are probably in a spare room or a bedroom or whatever. You're not in a custom-built multi-million dollar studio. Uh, neither am I. Uh, although it's custom-built, it's not multi-million dollar. Um, and in fact, on that note, so I've I've built this studio myself. I'm in an industrial unit. And I built it myself um, with not very much DIY experience. Um, you can see I still haven't plastered the walls, but um, I at least had an engineering degree behind me that allowed me to sort of study the acoustics and everything like that. And um, and on top of that, you know, 10, 15 years of industry experience. So that, that kind of helped. But running on the assumption that you don't have that And let's say, for example, you're in your room and you're on some budget monitors or headphones or whatever it is that's most suitable for you or, or most affordable for you. Um, 
you can still learn a lot about your equipment or your room or whatever just by listening and by that I mean if there are some tracks that you think sound great and you, you'll know the ones I, you know we've all got that at least 10 20 tracks in our playlist that it doesn't matter if you play it on an iPhone or in your car or in your studio or your mum's hi-fi it just sounds great we've all we've all heard tracks that do that um, those are the tracks that you listen to on a regular basis and what you need to do is sometimes just sit down load up an mp3 player or preferably WAV if you can but load up whatever your player is and just sit and listen I do it still on a regular basis I'll just load up iTunes stick on <clears throat> some dead mouse um, or Sometimes it'll be noisier. Um, what else do I listen to? There's quite a few. There's actually um, uh, Kral. There's there's a few that I listen to that range from sort of acoustic recordings all the way up to big monstrous D and B. Um, and I'll listen to levels and and sort of you have to sit down and listen to it objectively and not subjectively don't listen to how kick-ass the track is but listen to how loud the bass line is compared to the hi-hats or how loud the synth is compared to the kicks and bass combined and get an overall feel of each kind of frequency band if you split it up to say sub bass mid high bass then mid lows and or low mids and then your mids and your highs and you just need to sort of pay attention to where things sit in the frequency range um, and that's really kind of the final stage of your own mix then so if you if you were to spend say half an hour listening to a bunch of key tracks on iTunes and then come back to your mix down and listen to it how does it compare Obviously, it's not going to be as loud. We don't have any compressors in there yet or anything like that, but that's why uh, God gave us volume dials. Um, so just compare the two. Do they do they balance equally? Um, where do they sit? So that's something that's definitely worth paying attention to, um, and that's exactly all I'm doing here. And because I know my room, I know my monitors, I know everything in this room from the audience, um, Stacks to the event monitors I know they're all very transparent and I know that having built this room and, and uh, behind these walls I've, I've staggered certain materials so that it's got a, a, a non-parallel situation going on um, so I know the sound of this room or lack thereof and because of that I spend a lot of time listening to other people's music and that allows me to be able to sit here with a mix down and go, this sounds different. This is uncomfortable in the high end or the low end or whatever. In this case, I feel like the higher end of the frequency range is not quite sat right. So it's a really easy thing to do. I'm just going to raise the high hats up a bit in game. Um, so I'll play it now and we'll see where we get. <laughs> a bit better what did I actually do there I went up 7 dB on those hats that's uh, more than I expected but again I think that's one of the things with the mix down is you, you need to trust your ears and, and what you feel is right because it, you know sometimes it can be quite surprising um, there were also some other hats somewhere was it this channel I think What's in there? All right, that doesn't come in until later on. So let's play over here and have a look.
so yeah that's i've brought the claps up a little bit there as well um so let's just cut to this drop <laughs> sounding a lot more balanced now. I'm happy with that. <clears throat> so this leads me on to the final section of what I'm doing here. Uh, another thing I'm just going to drop in now is Enzo has been in touch and has actually made a couple of tweaks to the track. So uh, this won't be the final version, which is why I'm not going to go through everything in a, with a fine tooth comb right now. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm confident that that sounds like a tight mix. Uh, the first thing I'm going to then do is show you the fact that everything here gets sent to bus one, two, and this channel right here takes in bus one, two. You'll notice I already have an EQ and a compressor there and they're active and they're permanently active. And, uh, I believe it's what most mix engineers call them, call a, a mix bus, which is your sort of pre-master compressor. Some people like to have one, some people don't. I generally don't, but I found that this compressor in particular is just so subtle and so smooth that it, it really doesn't make much of an impact. And in fact, if I, I play, if we go to a heavier part of the track, that's fine, and play a bit here, you'll see how much gain reduction there is over here. <laughs> half a db so which is one of the reasons why i always ask for my tracks to have all the stems peaking at minus 10 db is because i know that equates to a level within this bus channel then that will allow me room to play with that and it's only given me half a db of gain gain reduction at these settings whatever they may be i have played around with them in the past and and i found that that was best for me um but what i will do is probably give it maybe a db of gain reduction in total so it's just a case of uh, lowering the threshold and I'll do that now that's fine so it's just going to catch the odd peak uh, I'll bring it down a little bit there um, so it's pretty much a DB of gain reduction in general uh, this EQ is a Pultec, um, it's the UAD2 and it's based on the original hardware bit of kit which was just an incredible bit of kit and I've got to be honest UAD have really done an incredible job at, at, at building this um, and I have very very subtle settings on, on here as well. What it's basically doing is both boosting and attenuating the low frequencies and both boosting and a little bit of attenuation in the high end. All this is done in these settings, all it's basically doing is around 5k, it's just giving a little bit of sizzle, basically. That's, that's the only way I can describe it. Um, if I play this, you probably won't hear much difference, but I'll bypass it and play and then activate it as it's playing. <laughs> So for me, I can hear in those hats, there's just a little bit more grit in the hats. Um, it's not something I would recommend using for many genres of music, but I think for the sort of deep house, tech house, techno sort of area and progressive, it, 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 just, it just works for me. So it's something I have in there while I mix because um, as you saw, I raised the level of the hi-hats 
um, if I then activated that, it raises probably another half a dB, and then you find yourself compensating and going back to bring the levels down of the hi hat. So for me, I just leave it in there by default. Um, here, I have for some reason a one, two, three, four, five band EQ, which is a bit silly because I only ever use it for one, but it's just there. Um, <clears throat> all I'm doing here is cutting away any silly low end and by silly I mean sort of you know sub 30 to 40 hertz um, which is another important thing to pay attention to and I tend to have this on pretty much everything I mix and or master um, because as we sort of went through the hi-hats earlier on uh, in one of the other videos um, you could hear there was a lot of low end below sort of you know eight nine hundred hertz which is not something you'd expect in hi-hats well if you're going below 40 hertz it's very rare that you're going to find a speaker especially if you're listening to this on headphones or if you do your mixes in on headphones or in a bedroom or whatever you might not, well, chances are your speakers can't even reproduce 30 hertz, but just because you're not hearing it and your speakers aren't reproducing it doesn't mean it's not there. So I tend to just have a little bit of a safety switch there. By default, look, it's on 34.8 hertz for some reason. And what I'll tend to do is just play a bit and then scoop either up or down just to find a point where I don't start killing the low end of the actual track. Um, so I'll do that now. Right, so I, I, it, from what I could hear there, I could take it up to about 40, 45 hertz before I start losing energy in the track. So I'll bring it back down to 30. I'm in the safe zone then, I'm not actually taking anything away from the track. All I'm doing is providing a bit of protection in case there are frequencies somewhere, if there's a, a, a random click or some white noise or something goes askew that you can't quite hear. It's just there as a safety sort of catch. Um, I've then got an L1 limiter <clears throat> and with this I barely, in fact I rarely use it for any attenuation. It's more just a, a, a gain control thing. Um, so if we look at this channel here, I'm hitting about minus five dB. I'll play it again. So you can see these input levels are probably hitting about minus three dB. Um, I'm leaving the output ceiling at zero because it's a limiter. I just don't want anything to go over zero. Um, but I'm in the final sort of chain of master bits now. So I want my levels pretty much at zero now um, at this stage in the chain. So if you're wearing headphones, this is your warning. It's now going to sound about 4 dB louder. So I'm going to activate that and I'll play it again. In fact, I'll un... I'll activate it while I play so you can hear the difference. So like I say, if you're wearing headphones, turn them down now. So now you can see that channel where it was sort of minus five dB peaking. It's now minus two and a bit. So that's bringing us up slightly. And I'm pretty sure I didn't look, but I'm pretty sure there's little to no attenuation. There might be a little bit. There we go, we saw one little flicker there. Um, the next thing in my chain is Brainworks Digital. Um, Brainworks are just an incredible company. Um, I, 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 the guy who is sort of the mastermind behind Brainworks, uh, Dirk Ulrich, he's just a mathematical genius. I, I cannot express that enough. Um, and this is one of my favorite plugins that they ever did, which was an equalizer, but it gives you mid side capabilities. 
so you can for example solo the the mid or the side frequent um, signals um, and it's you can have it in MS or dual mono or whatever I won't go into too deep into those features but you've got some clever little graphs here for the mono section and the stereo section you've got a bass shift dial here and that will actually sort of compensate as you start to raise the bass it'll compensate in the sort of two three four hundred hertz area as well um, and then same again with presence you can raise the presence and it'll compensate in the sub harmonics of that um, which can be very very clever um, so generally when I'm wanting a mix to be a bit cleaner uh, the muddy sort of area to, to look out for is usually around sort of 300 hertz, 2 to 300. Um, so you can see this one here in the mid section, um, I've got a relatively wide band and it's at 200 hertz and I've brought it down by 1.5 dB. Um, so that's just attenuating this area here in the, in the, in the graph. And all that's doing is getting rid of some of the mud. I've then increased the stereo width um, to 120%, which sounds like quite a lot. And in fact, that is quite a lot. Um, but I find that the Brainworks module, again, is, is just such a subtle one that it, it, you can really start to push things. Um, there's another fantastic feature here. So... Um, if you play music in a, uh, a nightclub sound system, most of them are traditionally mono systems anyway. Um, so playing with stereo balance is, is only gonna be detrimental to your work um, and you will get bigger and worse phase issues if, for example, your kick drums or your sub bass are in stereo. Um, that can cause all sorts of phase issues. Um, one of the reasons I recommend the Audient is that I can, uh, hit one of the function buttons here and listen to it in mono so I can check that nothing's going out of phase and wonky. And one of the beautiful things about this Brainworks plugin is it's, it's got built in what they call the mono maker and that means I can set this dial so you can see here anything below 300 hertz just converts to mono. It squishes into mono and passes it as a, a single signal. Um, you can AB between different presets. There are some built-in presets. This is just one that I've done myself as sort of a a, a, a beginner's template. Um, so again, I'll start playing the track and then I'll activate this. <laughs> play that bypassed and then activate it again. So again that's just kind of added a little bit more stereo width to the track. Um, it's also pushed up the presence and a tiny bit of the low end but most importantly it's cleared out and dipped out a, a bit of that sort of two three hundred hertz muddy area um, part of my mix bus as well is this one here which i actually lose a couple of db through the input and output um, only because i don't ever want it running hot and again this is just a slight little dip um, at 20 hertz which is doing nothing basically um, but it's that safety blanket again. I've got another little dip at 300 hertz and then I've got a little shelf which is only going up by 1 dB at 7k um, and that just adds a little bit of brightness and presence to a track. And then the final stage is another one by Brainworks. This is the XLV2. Again, another one of my absolute favourite plugins. Um, so again, it deals with the mid-side techniques um, but this time it's a multiband compressor that allows you to solo you've got mid low mid high so those are your two mono bands and then you've got a side band as well um, there's all sorts of levels here that'll show you the correlation for any phase issues or anything like that and your average balance it's got your input it's got uh, the summing amp 
built in. It's got a peak stop, so if you want it to be a limiter, I have that activated. It's got another mono maker here, uh, which although is active here, it's kind of pointless because I've already used the mono maker in the uh, previous plugin. But one of the, the real key benefits of this is the fact that you can solo those mid and side things, which I'll show you in a moment. You've also got some gain boost, um, which is compression boost and not necessarily actual just level. There's um, XL dials here, which I, I just love. Um, and then you've got your threshold settings. So you can see my threshold settings are, you know, I mean, that's that's the, the heaviest one is in the, the mid low and that's giving you what, all of one dB threshold. So it's, it's really not doing huge things, but those XL dials up here do something magical. I don't even know what they do. I've never really stopped to think about it, never questioned it. It's just a, a miracle. Um, so yeah, so same again, I'll play that and uh, activate it. Word of warning, uh, another headphone warning. It, we'll probably get a couple of dB louder again. Yeah, that's massively louder. And that to me is, is just the finishing touch where, where everything just really starts to gel together. Um, so I'm just gonna check the levels on this one more time. So you've got the input signal running here in the center and that's running fairly hot but not clipping in any way. Um, by the time it's gone through any sort of boost and attenuation and the XL dials, the output signal you can see with the peak stop will show you when it goes over zero. It's generally sort of getting about, you know, a dB, yeah, probably one dB of attenuation there. Let's double check that. Yeah, it's not even one dB. But again, I can solo this, for example. And I'm just listening to the mono low frequencies and then I've got the mono highs. And then I can just listen to the sides on their own. And then all of it together. And that my friends is a rough guide to my mix down process. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed. I hope it's all been worthwhile. I know these videos have been pretty long, um, but I think there's a lot to cover in the mix down. And if I'm brutally honest, I've really only sort of touched on, on the basics of things. So uh, hopefully at some point in the future, I'll get some more tracks through um, and hopefully they'll have different things needed doing to them. Um, and yeah, stick with us. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do like, comment, subscribe. Um, I'll be obviously doing my normal weekly vlog anyway. Um, and hopefully at some point in the future, I'll do some more mixed down stuff, maybe some mastering, who knows. Uh, you let me know in the comments. Uh, get involved, share the video, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.